Supernova. The term supernova is used to refer to the explosion of a giant star. When such a star explodes, it can release the energy of up to 100 tredecillion joules. This amount of energy can be equated to that in which the sun has been giving out since it came into existence. This form of an explosion has the capacity to shine brightness equivalent to that of 10 billion suns. Supernovas have the capacity to outshine the whole galaxy before they start fading after several weeks. They are normally split, depending on the attributes of light that human beings see coming from the different stars that explode. To enable people to understand the elements that light from the stars contains, a special technique, referred to as spectroscopy, is normally used. This technique enables people to view the spectrum that light creates on its way to the Earth. There are different types of supernovas that are known to exist. These are mainly divided into being either Type 1 or Type 2 supernovas. Type 1 supernovas are further classified into Type 1a, Type 1b, and Type 1c. There are two ways through which these supernovas can be formed. When the nuclear fusion process does not produce energy, and vice versa. For example, there is an instance where a massive aging star can cease to generate energy through the process of nuclear energy. This makes the star experience gravitational downfall, making it become either a black hole or a neutron star. The process results to a release of gravitational potential energy, which then heats and dismisses the outer layer of the star. The other way through which supernovas can result is when a white dwarf star gathers enough material through merging with a stellar companion, thus raising the core temperature of the star. The high temperature then ignites a carbon fusion process, which then makes the star to experience runaway nuclear fusion, thus disrupting the star completely. White dwarfs can also undergo a different type of thermonuclear explosion. This type of explosion is usually powered by hydrogen present on the surfaces of the stars. The sun falls in the category of solitary stars. These types of stars are said to have a solar mass that is below nine solar masses, thereby making it possible for these types of stars to develop into white dwarves even before they convert into supernovas. This analysis will therefore give a report of Type 1a supernovas and give its results on whether it can be used to act as a secondary standard candle. There are various ways in which Type 1a supernovas are formed, but the main process is associated with the eruption of the white dwarf in a very vigorous manner, thereby releasing extreme heat. A white dwarf is described as the remnant of a star whose life cycle is completed and has thus terminated nuclear fusion. 1.38 solar masses is the limit in which electron degeneracy pressure can support white dwarves efficiently. If the mass exceeds beyond this limit, the white dwarves begin falling. When the white dwarf starts accumulating in mass as a result of binary companion, the core of the white dwarf reaches the temperature that is just enough to facilitate carbon fusion. The white dwarves that are associated with the carbon and oxygen are said to have the capacity to undergo additional fusion reactions, thereby releasing a lot of energy when their temperatures rise to significant levels. The white dwarves whose solar masses are below the 1.38 limit rotate at a slow rate, while the white dwarves whose solar masses are above the 1.38 limit rotate at a faster rate. There are also instances when a star can merge with another star, although this is a very rare occurrence. However, when the merging occurs, the mass of the white dwarf will go beyond the limit, thereby making it collapse. This state of affairs then raises the temperature of the white dwarf to a level beyond the point of ignition of nuclear fusion.
After a few seconds when the nuclear fusion process begins, a significant amount of matter in the white dwarf experiences runaway reaction. The amount of energy produced in this event is enough to make the star explode. Type 1a supernovas have white dwarfs that have uniform mass, thereby making them produce constant uttermost luminosity. The explosions associated with Type 1a supernovas are said to yield stable values. The distance to the galaxies that host the Type 1a supernovas can therefore be easily estimated when astrologers treat Type 1a supernovas as standard candles. The measurement of distance becomes possible because the ability to see the supernova mostly depends on its distance from the Earth. In the supernova classification system, Type 1a supernovas fall in the subcategory of the Minkowski Zwicky supernova. There are various ways through which this type of supernova can form. To begin with, it is possible for a slowly rotating white dwarf that is associated with the carbon oxygen variable to accumulate matter from another companion. Type 1a supernovas are the most common types of supernovas. They can occur in almost any type of galaxy, thereby making them more common. Most of the white dwarves are formed when stars attach themselves to the long-lived stars in the universe. Before the bonding takes place, the long-lived stars may have wandered throughout outer space since the time they were formed. When the bonding process takes place, the transmission of mass to the white dwarves takes millions of years. This long duration makes the environment conducive for the formation of Type 1a supernovas. The major problem that has faced many astrologers today is how to identify supernova progenitors. Astronomers say that if they can manage to observe a progenitor, which can provide constraints that they need directly, they would be able to come up with useful models that would enable them to classify the different types of supernovas more effectively. Supernovas are the key to helping humanity gain better knowledge of outer space. Be sure to subscribe for more Space Rewind and tell us in the comments what you would like to see next in an upcoming video.